Heathens. For the people. Oh, you guys, we I'm were just talking. Here. Oh, what? Oh, God. I said, I'm over here going to be Glitch City, just so you know. Huh? Yeah, Heathen. Glitch City. Heathen. Heathen. She has not moved from Glitch City. She's no. been a constant resident. Um, We were just talking. I had to go to the doctors today, you guys, for my birth control, you know, because... No babies over here. No, no babies on board. And, uh, I had to get my weight done. And I, I kind of, I I always pay attention to my body size. I never pay attention to my weight. I mean, I can't even tell you. I think the last time I was weighed was back when I was seeing Sarah consistently. And it was like the mm-hmm. first point I saw her. And so I kind of had an idea how much I weighed just because like I know my body. And because I also don't care about weight, you guys, like. I can't, I can't stand, I I don't, I will never have a scale in my house. I'm not doing that shit. And, um, it's funny because every time I say how much I weigh, people are like, no way. It's like, yep. It's just, that's, that's the reality of weight doesn't fucking matter. But I was telling Nicole, um, how like, ha ha funny this is, but like, ha ha, I'm going to cry, but also ha ha funny. I'm not really going to cry, but I, I could see how it would make somebody feel like that. Yeah. Um, For my height, I'm 5'5". Five five. My weight, I'm 180. And that makes me, in a BMI scale, obese. Right. And I was <laughs> like, I think the last time I got weighed, and I'm, what am I, like 220. And I'm morbidly obese. Morbidly. It's just mind blowing to me. You know, I'm telling you what that is. The more I, and I know this is for all sexes and everybody. I know we all have our issues, right? Like we're none of us getting out of here alive. I get that bullshit, right? But like, you serious? We're all slowly dying. You want me to be 125 pounds? 125 pounds. Yeah. Yeah. I would have to lose like 30 to 40 pounds to mm-hmm. technically be a BMI's vision of health. Get right. fucked. I would lose right. my ass. I would lose my titties. I'll lose my double chin. <laughs> but you'll be alive. But I'd be, I would, I would be uncomfortable with myself. I just feel like nobody, everything out there is to make us feel like we're a shitty person. Yes, Everything, man. Right? Yeah. Right. Just every time. Every time you turn around, you're not good enough. You, Your teeth, you didn't do your teeth good enough because I just went to the dentist. So, of course, like, you know, you need to be flossing more and you need to be doing this. Do you know what I mean? Like, this whole thing of, like, you're not enough is just constantly rammed down our throats. Yeah. It's so annoying. I'm like, mm-hmm. man, we're trying to move into this space where we're body positive and even more than body positivity, we're just body comfortable how about that oh yeah i like that better than positivity i like that way better than positivity like just be comfortable dude there's no pressure just be comfortable (laughs) yeah because like fuck it man there's always going to be somebody or something out there telling you you're not if you if i weighed 125 pounds 130 pounds people would be worried about me like did you eat are you eating are you okay yeah, but I feel like it doesn't matter if you're t- if you if you lost weight, people are like, "Oh my god, you're so skinny. What are you doing? Are you okay?" Like your anorexia, and then yes. like all the way to the other because they're they're trying to like save people. Do you know what I mean? Like these people have this like superhero mentality that I'm going to swoop in and save you from your anorexia. And like, yeah, dude, like maybe I can support you and stuff like that. But like, what are we gonna do? Come on. Yeah, exactly. I'm I just, just think, tired of feeling like I'm a bad person all the time. I was just going to say that too. We're a little morbid today. We are a little morbid. <laughs> We're going to call this episode "We're Morbid Today." We're morbid. We I'm are. just, I'm just over it. I'm disappointed in the earth sometimes, in the way that we mm-hmm. treat each other as humans, and it's frustrating as all hell because right. I love people, and as much as I sometimes cannot stand people. It's normally the muggles that I can't stand. And it's it's the muggles that don't want to have conversations. Right. That's hard for me. It's the the only conversation they're having is the ones that have programmed inside of them. Yeah. And 
I feel like as hairdressers or anybody that has seen multiple people and talked to them, right? You start to feel, see this uh, pattern of conversation, like whether it's the weather or the political temperature or the uh, what's new on TV or entertainment or whatever, right? And it's like, uh. <laughs> yeah, like, do you give fucked? I know it's nice out. I look at speaking of polarity. This is what I've been looking at. I'm like, yeah, dude, it's nice out in April. That means we're about to have the hottest summer yeah. in a long time. And mm-hmm. I don't want to hear shit about it because y'all are yeah. happy. We're having weather, nice weather in April. We got to be thankful for what we have now and realize that we're going to pay for it later. Mm -hmm. Well, and it's April. Like I remember somebody saying in February, now this is Michigan. I've been here for 46 years. I can look back and see patterns, right? But like, it's always going to be cold in February. Always. Every day, except that one crazy year that it was 80 for a week okay that was crazy but like out of 45 years out of 45 years only one time was it is the sky falling you know like yeah exactly like what is happening (laughs) why is it 80 in february that's weird or maybe it wasn't february maybe it was march I i can't remember like all the tr- remember when all the trees bloomed and they they were all worried because they didn't get fruit so like we didn't have apples or cherries because like they bloomed but they died before they could pollinate. I can't remember. I don't. You know. I think there's some things I just don't pay enough attention to, and that might be one of them. Like also, I do know. If you consider your age and stuff, like I remember, you know, people are like, oh, remember that, and then. uh I don't know, dude, because I was like 17. Like, I wouldn't, didn't give two fucks about what you're talking about. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> I'm like, dude, I didn't give a flying fuck about that shit. <laughs> if it was cold out, it was cold out, whatever. Right, I just right. decided what I was going to wear that day. If it was hot, it was hot. I just, that's all mm-hmm. I cared about. Now, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm a fucking weather channel freak. Oh my God. Uh, All I have to do is Cassie with the weather. Dude, it's my, it is my guilty pleasure. Oof. Oof. That and Nickelback. Oh my goodness. I love Nickelback. (laughs) (laughs) I'll look at that photograph anytime you want me to, sir. (laughs) I will do it. I will be the one. Look at that photograph. <laughs> Seriously. Okay. It is my time to say let's get down to brass tacks. Oof. Oof. Um, so we're talking polarity today. And per usual, I found quite a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Shocker. Shocking. Um I felt like we should explain a little bit about polarity and maybe the law of polarity first to try to talk you guys into what polarity actually is and how to think about it. Because I feel like it's one of those words where it's like one of those dumb moments. We should know what it means, right? But then I feel like we don't actually know what it means yeah i always love to revisit words because like i you know like how we found heathen right like yeah it's i think it's always like wait a minute i think i know what that word means but let me check Mm -hmm. because i'm like don't quote me (laughs) right i go i think i've been told it's it means this but if you look it up and don't find that definition i don't know to tell you yeah again don't take everything we say as truth Mm -hmm. um i figured if we'd start there and then maybe move into um what it means for masculine and feminine energy and how to explain the two really quick um so the law of polarity is the principle that everything has two poles think like north and south pole right you have the good and evil love and hate attraction and disconnection 
Um, and everything in the universe has an opposite. So mm. everything has a dual. And you the way the best way that I found to describe it that made the most sense to me being a visual person is um when you flip a coin, heads and heads and tails, they're the duality of each other. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're same not coin. separate from each other. Right. Yeah, same coin. Mm-hmm. Um kind of like we cannot know one thing without knowing the opposite side of that thing right you can't know good without knowing evil you can't inhale without exhaling but that's the best way i found to describe the polarity Mm -hmm. in the simplest way or like the law of polarity it's just that everything has a dual side to it Mm -hmm. um so when we're talking polarity interpersonally too, you can't nurture certain energies within yourself. You can't have peace without having anger. Mm-hmm. You, you can't have, have when the, you would never know when it was. There would be no yeah. nothing to measure it to, right? Right. Like you can't have happiness without having sadness. Mm-hmm. Like it's the the duality, man. The yin and yang of it. <laughs> The Nicole and the Cassie. <laughs> we're we're opposites. Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm hot. You're cold. You're spicy. Sometimes I'm not. Sometimes I'm spicy. Sometimes you're not. It's the days for the unfortunate souls that have to deal with their double shot of spice. <laughs> we get real high up on that mm. Scoville scale, and oh man watch out just suck man watch oh out that was actually really funny because you glitched as you said watch as soon as i started going back i saw a glitch i was like oh Oh." (laughs) so when it comes to polarity we also have to discuss duality right because it goes right along with polarity you have poor and rich good and evil but the relative so what's the what's the difference between polarity and duality so polarity is the poles it's going to be the ebb and flow which also is the law of rhythm so we're mm. going to be talking how the law of duality is under polarity as well as the law of rhythm so duality is just the fact that there's black and white polarity is the pole between them oh okay. think like um you have the two sides of the coin, right? And duality mm-hmm. is going to be, one's going to be heads, one's going to be tails. But the fact that they're together is the polarity. Okay. Does that, is that an easier way to make it make sense? Because <laughs> you yes. can't have polarity without having duality. Okay. That's what my next question was, is like, mm-hmm. can you have duality without polarity? No. <laughs> No, as I shake my head, yes. No. So the thing is, is we'll get into this, but you guys, you there's a point where polar, polarity and duality will no longer matter. It will balance. no longer affect you. Is that balance? It's that you get to a point of the one, of the all-knowing. It's when you rise above and polarity will no longer matter in your life and neither will duality. Because you're walking the righteous path of the saints. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, is that the middle path? Yeah. But again, this is all based on your perception. It all depends on everyone's perception. Duality and polarity can be different for every single person. So let's think um, a good example that I was thinking about was a material person compared to a spiritual person. The duality in it is a material person's going to think that, you know, money, a house, an expensive car can mean they're rich. Mm -hmm. While that now, granted, these are extremes because there's ways to integrate this, but this is just for the sake of duality and polarity. Okay. The duality of that would be a spiritual person who just needs enough money for their basic needs, such as shelter and food and finds richness and knowledge and wisdom. But with this 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 conver- this conversation is 
kind of a hard, hard conversation to have because there's no rights and no wrongs within in this. It's all based on perception of what mm-hmm. you think good was good, what you think is evil, what you think is richness, what you think is poorness. Like it's all based on perception, you know? So mm-hmm. when we speak of polarity, we speak of relativity and beliefs and beliefs aren't truth. Truths remain unchanged. Mm-hmm. Hence why Nicole and I always say we believe in everything and nothing all at the same time. That's right. And that's the only thing I can truly say I believe in because it my beliefs are constantly changing. Something that I would have, you know, in the little bookcase in the back of my head on a shelf that says, for example, Christianity. We've mm-hmm. been you've been talking Bible here and there. We'll talk more about it in the future, but there's these little pages that get pulled out and rewritten as you learn more, right? Mm-hmm. So it's Absolutely. like it's it's beliefs are not truth. It's kind of like theories are not facts. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, a- uh, it's the whole thing is like, the more I learn, the more I, I learn that, or I, I understand why everything is constantly changing. Like you can't, it's hard to find a fact, right? Like it's hard to find a, a true fact. It, it really is. Mm-hmm. Especially cause like you guys, um, one of my clients her husband is a phenomenally smart person. Like when it comes to science and the body, this man knows so much. And he just found a new molecule in the body, a new molecule. Like Mm -hmm. nobody's ever discovered this before. And, and he's going to be like working with drugs around it to help cure certain kinds of things. I can't get into that because I don't know enough. She didn't know enough. She's like, I can't even tell you anything and i was like i can't i don't even want to ask <laughs> i don't even have the question the knowledge to ask a question Do you know, like <laughs> in that realm that's above my pay grade baby <laughs> i'm gonna need pictures <laughs> gonna need the basic maths of it right because that Toddler. was yeah but i mean it's one of those things where it's like things he he's gonna be unearthing these things that people have thought were facts about the body for so long. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, that's so cool, man. <laughs> uh, I love, I love that. Cause like, to me, it was funny to me and I don't mean to be like political or anything like that, but I thought it was funny to me that people are like, well, don't you believe in science? I'm like, um, science is a, science can change. Or else I'd still be bloodletting in my salon. Do you know what I mean? Like, right. Science I'm is like, a tool. Right. I was like, uh, we don't even know what we don't know. We don't know what we don't know. I love that saying so much. <laughs> we don't know what we don't know. And it's really exciting that we don't know what we don't know absolutely for yeah for me for sure for you for me we're like yeah probably for most of our listeners too because like let's be honest like we you'll hear something that sounds so simple i say this all the time and then you're like well fucking duh dude (laughs) why didn't i think of that (sighs) all the time that's like quick little nugget i freaking found these purses that hold your tumblers it's a purse that has like its own separate pocket in it that you can clean out just for your tumbler. So when you have it on your sling side, you're not just having to carry your freaking bottle water bottle around all the time. And I was oh, like, man. like, why did I think of that? That's so can smart. And can you put it in any purse though? Cause that would be, cause your Louis Vuitton wearers are not going to want to have just any purse. Right. Well, I can't put it in any purse because my little bat bag doesn't carry it very well and I drop it a lot. Mm -hmm. So this is like its own little like it's a square bag and it's got like its tumbler. It's a bag that's made for this. So they have bigger and smaller versions. And I just thought it was so brilliant, especially because of how big like water cups like Stanley's and stuff like that have become on TikTok. And they even made one for that to where the handle like clicks in in the bag so that it holds it in so you're not dropping it out of your purse. And I was just like, Dude, that's so brilliant. That is absolutely brilliant because that is a need for me. 
I drop my water bottles all the time, spill shit all the time. And it's just things like that where I'm like, dude, that's so freaking cool. Like people are cool, man. So smart. So yeah. Um, when we also talk about polarity, we also have to talk about the law of rhythm. Like there's duality in nature and there it's not, there's not a guaranteed, um, equality in the physical world. And that's where the law of rhythm is going to come in. It's going to help to create the flow to create, bring everything into the equilibrium. So, um, like there's steps on, this is all based on the hermetic pr principle of polarity and there's steps in how to do that, how to get to the ebb and full of things, how to bring you back to the net to pull being polar. Mm -hmm. Um, so understanding the dual nature of things is going to be your first one. Understanding that what you're going through, there could be a duality to that. And then setting your goal on where you want to get and then being prepared for that opposite duality to come first. Because we can't experience being rich without going through poverty, mm -hmm. essentially. Um but then you, if you keep overcoming the hardships and you keep your mind focused on the goal, you can get through it. But you'll, when, you start with the, when you start with understanding about the duality, then you'll be able to understand why you're going through what you're going through to be able to get to the other side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you get this understanding of like, okay, now I know where you're coming from. And I can, like, there's depth in what you're talking yeah, because it like mm -hmm. makes sense when you're like going through something and you're like, well, why is it not coming yet? Why am I going through the exact opposite? Well, when you understand that that's the duality of what you asked for, mm -hmm. helps a lot with manifestation too. And not getting into these points where we get really negative about what we're feeling too or what we're going through because you will understand it, mm -hmm. you know? And I think you and I have experienced this, like, since we've opened our own salon at My Salon Suites, right? Like, at least I have, like, all this hardship and stuff. Like, oh, okay, if I'm asking magic to give me, like, success, and then all of a sudden I start going through, like, these little, like, dramas or places to grow or, you know, arguments with people, I was like, what? happened to my life like I was fine I mean you know like and now I'm like now I've got this and I've got to worry about this and I'm trying to figure out this and I'm like oh this is like school right and, and without knowing that yeah it, you wouldn't know the other half well and it's so hard sometimes to become be aware of like that you're going through that polarity of the situation the duality of it like it's mm -hmm. it's hard to understand that that's where you're at in the flow because you're in the trenches you're going through it and that can be rough mm -hmm. i feel like that's how we felt in that situation too where it was like what the hell is going on yeah because we're like wait a minute like okay now it's a pattern so now it's us what are we doing right so yes. i finally just let go so that's a big one too. So I think we should move into like the feminine masculine, because I found a lot on why we let that go, that surrender and what that is. Do you mm -hmm. know what that is? Mm -mm. Do you know what not letting it go is? Um, no. Is that stagnant? So it's masculine energy. Oh. So a lot of times what happens is um, when we're not, letting our masculine and feminine flow we are creating problems for self and that can look like when your masculine energy is holding you back from making a decision because like or taking accountability for something your toxic feminine side will create the victimhood wow. so when you surrender you allow your feminine energy to flow and then you allow the masculine to take over when you are creating boundaries. So let me break this down a little bit better before we keep going with like examples so that you guys can kind of understand this. So your masculine and your energy 
your masculine and your feminine energy inside. You don't want to look at it like you're trying to balance those two against each other. You want to look at it like you're trying to balance the shadows behind them. So you're letting both of them flow because us as humans are going to have one energy that is inherently stronger than the other. And we mm -hmm. don't need them battling each other. Mm -mm. So when we it's allow a partnership, it's like you, they're supposed to help you. Yeah. Like they walk mm -hmm. hand in hand inside of you. Yeah. And some of us, the masculine is going to be a little bit stronger. And some of us, the feminine is going to be a little bit stronger. Mm -hmm. It's different for every person. Right. So, um, what I like to say too is like, look at it like your left and right brain. They have to work together, but they're very different. Mm -hmm. So being in your higher masculine energy could look like taking action, setting and upholding boundaries, leadership, or standing up for a cause. And then being in your higher feminine could look like listening or holding space, feeling your emotions, nurturing someone, pleasure, or creativity. Um, so when you get that healthy balance of both of those ebb and flows, you have your action and your creativity. So if you want something big to happen in your business and you let your feminine energy flow, you can get brainstorm all these ideas and give yourself the space to relax and like think and let it creativity flow. But then you can allow your masculine energy to come step in and take action to make those things happen for yourself. Mm -hmm. They're a partnership. They're partnerships. You got to have the one with the other. Yeah. They're in love. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I think this is also too, is what they call the alchemical marriage. Oh, so then they'll have the alchemical child, which that's next on my list of which rabbit holes. As I say, that would be a rabbit hole, but it does make sense mm -hmm. because we, you can get to a point where these kind of energies won't really affect you anymore. And I think that's what you're taught when you say like, you'll get to the alchemical child is in the duality and polarity of things aren't going to matter anymore because you're constant, you're above it almost. Mm -hmm. You've married the two, they've had you, and then you get to rise above it. And what is, is true. Mm -hmm. What you think, what you manifest, it's, it's, all for the best of all. It's the best for you, the best for all. There's no thinking about the polarity behind that, what that could cause. There's well, nothing balance, you have to right? think about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like ultimate balance. Mm -hmm. Libra. <laughs> You're like, yes, I'm just going to stand here. Yes. <laughs> With the eyebrow. <laughs> um. So yeah, when we were talking about that toxic femininity and that toxic masculine, it's like the shadow side of your divine feminine and your divine masculine. Mm -hmm. And when one of them's out of balance, they can both become out of balance very, very quickly and they can withdraw. Your victimhood comes from your femininity and your not wanting to take accountability comes from your masculine, that mm -hmm. fight, that bite. That is from your masculine. And when you don't want to take accountability for something that you've done or felt and could cause harm to others, you then allow your feminine to validate it and bring you into victimhood. Wow. Victimhood too, man. That's an easy one to slip into. Oh, it's so easy. Because your fem your mat your toxic shadow side of femininity mm. in you is gonna validate the hell out of your mm -hmm. toxic masculine side. Somebody had told me once, and I thought it was so true, is that uh we gaslight ourselves so well. And I was like, Of course we do. I know exactly what I'm thinking. Heck yeah, man. You know, so of course I know all the like, oh, well, why I make this not toxic is because of this, because of that, and because of this. And I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like gaslighting yourself is so much easier than we think. And then when you realize you're doing it, you're like, fuck. Well, and also you want to believe it. Right. You know what I mean? Like half of that is you want to believe it. 
that's why it's like fuck because sometimes you're so frustrated by the fact that you believe this Mm -hmm. but you've made yourself believe it but you made yourself believe it Mm -hmm. oh (laughs) (laughs) oh no so So annoying So yeah, when we start to understand the energies within ourselves, we can start to utilize them, right? So like when you know you have a lot of shit to get done, you can step into your mask, your higher masculine, your divine masculine energy to get that shit done. Mm-hmm. Like that part of you is going to be like, all right, here we go. We got to do this, 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 let's go. But then when you want to relax and enjoy yourself, you want to be creative and brainstorm ideas or just make shit. Be, make art and shit, make shit. That's your divine feminine. And, you know, when we craft time. Yeah. And I feel like there's a lot of good ways to step into both of those. I mean, if you're a Mm -hmm. meditator, you can meditate with both of those parts of the, your sides of the, your body to be able to start understanding what those different energies feel like and what they look like and how to utilize them and pull that energy up out of you when you need it. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like you could do for the people that like doing more of the pretty stuff. You could do a bath Mm -hmm. for your divine feminine. You could do a bath for your divine masculine. You could do a bath to bring polarity to the two. You could bring them together, even though they already are together in your head and in your heart. So then you feel it, you know, Mm -hmm. because it's, I feel like there's always that step between, well, they already are hand in hand, but it's like, well, I don't, I don't think that, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you could do different visuals. You could do baths. You could do candles. There's a lot of things you could do to help get that visual into your head. Mm -hmm. Um, But also, I feel like when we're talking both sides of this coin, we got to talk about respect for each of them, too. And I feel like what can happen a lot of the times is when you start looking at the dark side of these energies within you and you see that your your divine masculine's upset it could be because you need to be more assertive and create more boundaries and uphold them Mm -hmm. a lot of times that's where anger comes from is we were talking about this in the salon the other day about how somebody was she's like i'm so frustrated i can't figure out why and i'm like or we figured it out it was because she crossed a boundary, mm-hmm. you know, and then she's mad at herself. Right. And it's like, yeah, dude, I get it. Like, that's what, but that's a good trigger point because you're like, oh, wait, I'm frustrated. Where am I boundary check? Like what, where are my boundaries at? Like, yeah, your divine feminine also being out of balance can look like you need to learn how to relax mm-hmm. and surrender the flow of life. If you're constantly causing yeah. that fight. It, it's going to also put you right out of balance, put you always, in a place that doesn't feel good. Well, always, I feel for these ones too. And I know that you and I've talked about this is look at the people that you don't like that you're resistant to, because those are the people that that aspect of them that you see in them is the one thing that you're shadowing from yourself. That's the person that you didn't give time or no, or your parents didn't give time or whoever, like you didn't nurture that part. Some reason your world said that that wasn't how you were supposed to be. And that's your fragmented piece. That's that piece that you have to integrate back into yourself. And it's so hard for me. Can you give the heathenistic people an example? Well, like, okay. So if you have like a girl that is being a victim and making her own like, drama for herself and you're like well here we go again and then she comes in and she repeats the same story that she said okay so that girl right we all know that girl right she's always late she just she takes all she wants she doesn't you know have any feeling for anybody else she only thinks of herself right Mm -hmm. um and we're like god i hate that girl so much like why is she here and da 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 that's an aspect of us that we have told was bad or unlovable and we put it in a little like box in our head somewhere in our heart in our body and told her she was bad and put her in the dark and Mm -hmm. that's and then she's breaking 
like she wants to be free she wants to be part of the whole system right like we all do Mm -hmm. and those are the people that you attract like that that you have that's why you have that that person in your life to remind you that you have to heal that part of yourself and girls i'm sure there's an example for guys unfortunately you know like there's that guy that you don't like that's the aspect of you that you are not paying attention to that you're not healing or integrating into your whole self because yeah that particular ingredient in your human being is maybe too spicy by itself but you put it in a cream sauce and it's great right it puts that just that little bit of whatever (laughs) it needed do you like that cream sauce yeah i did like that it likes that actually a lot Because I was like, oh, yeah, no, you're me not handling spice. I'm like, yeah, yeah, you put that shit in cream. It's not going to be so damn spicy. It might not be spicy at all. I love that. (laughs) But that's the thing is like we run against these people, even like the people that is yelling at the, you know, the worker that you're behind there. You know, this is reflected so much of like, A, they're not getting their needs met and you know how that feels, but also like, you know, the poor worker behind there is getting, you know, taken out on. And that's another aspect of you compared to like, you know, we can't yell. A lot of us would like to, I'd like to yell at the top of my lungs sometimes too, just because I'm frustrated. Right. But we don't, we keep that like locked away because that's bad. I'm not bad. I can't do that. Dude, and in that situation, I'm like, say something. Right. right. When I'm a patron and somebody's getting yelled at, and I know, like, I'm like, I would, f- I would really hate to be that girl right now. And I'm like, mm-hmm. you know what? I'm just going to say something. And I have before, and it's felt really good. And I've helped other people do it because it's not in a like way where it's hurtful. It's just like, hey, man, yeah. they're doing their best. We're waiting to. Like, right. there's been many a times where it's been the old lady in the line that's really upset. Because she's been waiting more than like a couple minutes and she's upset about it. So mm-hmm. and then I'll be the one that's like, hey, man, like she, they're they're doing their best. And like we, we're waiting too. we get it. But like we, we just got to be nice to them. Right. Right. Well, they forget, you know, people forget. And like I said, they're taking their frustrations out on somebody else. It's like a projection thing, right? Like, well, yeah. And sometimes I think, too, it is. I think it could be us because there are times when I'm like, why the fuck is this taking so long? (laughs) Especially in the Starbucks line. I'm always like, why does it take 30 minutes to go through the Starbucks line? And I pre-ordered my drink. (laughs) And then I'm like, I'm not going to yell at him. No, no, that's so true. But I think that line sometimes, like if you're sensitive and you are waiting you get a big dose of all that shit. Cause like, not only do you feel the car in front of you or the feel like the person or like the whole line has an energy bond. And I'm like, like, and I, it's like, we're all being poop shooted through it too. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yep, everybody has to being... wait their time to form and then you get shot out the end. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I yeah. feel like that's so true. That's that, well, that was a really good way to say that, though, Nicole, and like a good example, I'd say, because I feel like it's always hard to hear. I feel like at least for me, it was always hard to hear. Well, that's a mirror. And it's like, what does that even mean? What do you mean <sighs> that's a mirror? <laughs> that, is far like, as, that is not part of my truth. I put her away and buried her. Like We don't know her. <laughs> <laughs> You're not allowed to point her out. <laughs> We have buried her. She doesn't even have a gravestone. She doesn't even exist. You'll never find her. (laughs) And then when you start looking at it, though, you're like, fuck. Mm -hmm. Who's right? It's like, yeah, man, you were right. Like, that is a mirror. And when you start looking at things that bother you like that, a lot less things bother you because you are actually working on it. When you look at it and work on it, it's like the shadow side of, like, these energies, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you're no longer letting your toxic feminine tell you you're a victim. You're no longer telling your toxic masculine, we're not taking responsibility for that because we didn't do anything wrong. Right, right. And it's it's a hard role to navigate because, like, I want to be a victim sometimes. 
you know, and I want to be a dick sometimes and I want, do you know what I mean? But I know that those don't, they don't serve me, but I need that little assertment in there. So I'm not being walked over too. Right. So for me, it's a hard, like middle path to kind of navigate because, and I feel like I'm getting better. Like, I feel like my, if it was a rhythm thing, like, I feel like it was like this. So it took me like way far into being pushed over and way angry and now I feel like the more I work on myself it gets a little like like a lazy like a, river yeah and not so like dramatic or dramatic it's more like this because I can see what I'm doing in that moment I can see why I'm frustrated and um and nurture that inside myself like that's okay it's okay to be frustrated it's okay to like you know, like, I don't like people to tell me what to do. And when we were in the dentist office, this woman was like, cause I made her nervous. I know, but like, she's like, Oh, sit down. And I was like, I'll stand. I will not stand. Even, <laughs> not even, right. Like that wasn't scary enough. I'm like, God damn it. Um, cause I don't want to be a bother. Right. I don't want to be a bother. I don't want you to make a special trip for me. I'm, you know, I, I literally just want to like, but that's not true. Me just being there is being a bother. So really, like, I need to let her take care of me so that she feels comfortable, right? Right. So I was like, Ugh. I'm like, no, no, just just accept it and surrender and go with it because that's better for her and for my daughter. It's not about me, right? But with me trying to make it not about me, I'm making it about me. Do you know what I mean? I like, was just going to say that. Mm-hmm. But was you with trying to make it not about you? Well, then it really became about you. Because then exactly. it wasn't as simple as, well, I get you a chair and then you're done. It's a, no, 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 no. I need you to sit. Like, I please let me take care of you. And you're like, no, I don't want you to take care of me. I'm fine. I could do it myself. Leave me alone. No, right, mom. right, right. And I get, I get nervous when I go into new places. I get nervous when I like, especially doctors and stuff like that, because we don't see eye to eye a lot yeah. of times. And, um, and I've had bad experiences with doctors. So like, I just, I don't trust them very easily. So I'm, I'm trying to like, but this was a great experience. She just, she did a great job. She did a great job with us both in there. She did a great job, you know, with her teeth. Uh, Trinity was like, oh my God, my teeth hurt so bad. Yeah. I feel like like, that's normal. It always hurts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I go, but are they clean? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. I feel like um some other ones I wanted to talk to you about too. Um, some signs that you are out of balance is codependency. Oh yeah. Codependency is really hard and narcissism. Mm-hmm. And Narcissism's co- hard too. Yeah, dude. I, I feel like it's easier to spot than codependency. Do you know what I mean? Or at least it's less acceptable than codependency. I think codependency is kind of acceptable. I feel like codependency has a veil over it. Mm. And even when somebody tries to pull that veil until you realize that there's a veil, you will never see it. Because you won't believe it. No. Well, what's the definition of codependency? Hold on. You know who has our back in definitions? Webster Dictionary. So let me just pull <laughs> them right up. <laughs> God, thank God for Wikipedia and Webster Dictionary. Yeah, they just really have our backs. <laughs> our best fucking friends, man. I'm going to get Webster Dictionary tattooed on my face. Oh. Will it be okay. in that book print? Because that'll be nice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that <be> so funny. <laughs> okay. The definition of codependency is excessive emotional or psychological reliance on a partner, typically one who requires support on account of an illness or addiction. So another way that they've said it is the tie that binds most of us together is this trap called codependency. Hmm. That's not bad. That's not bad. That's not too bad. Codependency is hard to get out of, man. But you know what I have found? Because I used to be codependent on a friend at a good point in time. 
And um, one of my clients was like, you know, they have support groups for codependency. And I was like, like AA? And she's like, like, yeah, like AA. What if you get codependent? What if you get codependent on a support group? I guess that's better than on a partner. Oh, that's true. Because they help you work through it. It's kind of like people talk to each other and they help give you tools and resources on how what to do, how to become independent, how to not rely on somebody else's emotions to feed your emotions. And yeah, which is really good. Cause like, I feel like once you find out that you are codependent, it's like, well, how, how do I be independent? hundred percent. You know, what does that look like? Oh, it's so hard. That's a hard one. I feel like, yeah. Narcissism, I feel like is something we use very loosely. Mm-hmm. and it's oh it got trendy mm-hmm. it did get trendy and now everybody's a narcissist and i was like whoa <laughs> yeah. yeah are we looking up definitions and actually doing our research here, no they friends? just heard they just heard it and they were like oh yeah i don't like him so he's a narcissist i'm like oh you mean he had boundaries yeah and don't get me wrong peeps like there are narcissists out there just like there's mm-hmm. gaslighters but then this goes back to the thing there's a polarity to that right there's a reason there something's out of balance with somebody that's like that well, it's a spectrum too like it's not going to be like we're not i can be narcissist you can be narcissist like we you know like oh yeah uh so it's not like just like oh they're a narcissist and that's it it's like oh maybe they're having a narcissistic moment I agree. I'm looking up the definition really quick because we love definitions in this household. (laughs) It's a person who has an act. Wow. That was a brain fart. An excessive. Excessive was hard for me just now. (laughs) Um, A person who has an excessive interest in or admiration of themselves. Like they never do anything wrong. They're perfect. They, they don't make mistakes. They, they know it all. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. There's those people out there, you guys, but you guys got to look at like, that really does mean that their, their energies within are out of balance. They really need help. Yeah. Well, and I noticed somebody had said one time that narcissists are, uh wounded impasse like that's a a shield that they oh i have not ever thought about that i mean that makes sense right Mm -hmm. like they got too it's almost like they got too sensitive you know and they had to like turn that off it was too much they had to build up this wall of, you can't tell me shit because I'm the best. Yeah. Wow. That's why there's that little bit of imbalance in there, like that little emotion that steeps out. Yeah, that's sad, man. Mm-hmm. I feel like what my biggest thing I'd like for everybody to take away is um, realize there's there's this polar polarity and it's like it looks like there's a bunch of different ways people have made it look. But when you have the duality in the middle, it's like an infinity loop around them. Mm-hmm. Polarity is the infinity loop. You're going to go through this ebb and flow, and rhythm is what pushes you through that. Okay? And keep in mind that everybody's just doing the best they can, man, and some people need help to get through some of those parts. We all need help at some point. You know, we're a social society. We're a social creature, right? And the thing is, is we get into these arguments, right? And like, really, everybody thinks they're trying to do the best. It's not like one side is trying to be serial killers and the next side is like saints. Like, that's not, everybody thinks they're doing the best. And I think we forget that. I think we forget, we get so caught up on like making our point right Instead of just realizing we're all trying to do the same thing. At the end of the day, we're trying to keep herself safe or family safe. You know, maybe make a little money on top of that. Like, so all our needs are met. Like, 
it's really all we want, but like we get involved or the tail, these scales get tipped on the most like uh, things that don't even matter anymore. Yeah. And they're just not, I don't know. It's just like this whole, I don't even know where I was going with it. Never mind. Well, and to add to that, it's just all perception, man. Mm-hmm. All of this is perception. We always say use your discernment. We all mm-hmm. have our own beliefs. We all have our own feelings and what's important to us. And that's okay. We can, there's a reason why we're all different. Like mm-hmm. Nicole has said many a times within the podcast is the universe doesn't repeat itself. We can't mm-hmm. all believe and think the same thing. We can't all have the same experiences and we can't all care about the same shit. No, we wouldn't have. Why would we do that? Why would Why would they repeat it though? Exactly. Like we can't all care about cats, man. Because then there wouldn't be dogs. And, and I love dogs. all animals. <laughs> I love to have them all. I love them. <laughs> That's like you guys I wanted to add to earlier when was Nicole was talking about like um, having these blow ups, having these victim moments. I was I was just at my well, I still am towards the end of my um, monthly period time that I haven't had in years. Be thanks birth control. And um, I blew up on my partner a couple times right before it. I was an angry person. I was not happy and it felt so good. But then it felt mm-hmm. so bad. Mm-hmm. And it was like these like big blow up. It feels so good. I'm going to scream at you. And then I'm going to crash right down into the gutters. And I'm going to cry because I'm the worst person ever. <laughs> I did it two days in a row. <laughs> and then I was kind of fine. And then I would go through another ebb where it was like. I was fine all day. And then I got in my car and I cried the whole way home and I cried all night. And it was like mm-hmm. just one of those things where it's like, you know, we, when you allow for these things to flow, then you can allow to bring it back to polarity. Cause like you can't always tell what's going on too in the moment when you're in the middle, you're in the thick of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When you're, in, I like to say it's when you're in the mud, you don't want to be told that you're in the mud. No. Don't, no, they're in the mud. Don't talk to them. Don't tell them. Mm-mm. You gotta let them get through that. They'll make hey. it. Yeah, you can put a lifeline out. Like, I'll put my hand out, but I'm not telling you that you got mud on your shoes because I'm going to get bit. That's what I have with that. You got to wait. Get, but going to get real bitey in here. Mm-hmm. Real spicy. Real nice spicy. And spicy like. I, I don't like it spicy. <laughs> I don't like it. We've been talking about spice for two episodes in a row. <laughs> Maybe in the future, oh, in the future, we could have our own spice line, our own hot sauce. Can we have the anti-hot sauce? Like, this one is a negative. That's what's so funny about it. We hate spice, and we're going to have our own spice line. And it's going to be salt. (laughs) And vinegar. And vinegar. (laughs) It'll be like, it'll be like. These guys will be like, let's do a spice test on this new line. And they'll be like, this is not spicy at all. We're like, so spicy. It's so spicy. It's called like, cut your tongue off spicy hot sauce. It'll be called like water spice. Water spice. (laughs) Watermelon spice. It tastes like green peppers. I think this is just green peppers. <laughs> I don't know. This really tastes like green peppers. I, this one tastes like a red one. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that would work for me. It's spicy. Yeah, so that's all I had on polarity today. You had? Did you have anything you wanted to add? Um, Is that what we've already talked about? Well, I think you have to read all of, well, you really, for this like little taste that we did, it's really the seven principles of the hermetics law, right? Universal law. Um, It starts with mind. Everything has rhythm. Everything is a gender polarity. Um, You go through these, like, it's a whole thing. And I think to really understand and grasp it, 
is to go deep diving and read the three hermetics or the her what's it called it's by the three hermetics i don't know if you start looking up hermetic law the book will come up oh you know what i think i've got it in there The three amigos. Sorry, peeps, we're looking for it for you. Because oh, I agree, because we kind of touched a little bit on three of those laws today, talking law of rhythm, law of duality, law of polarity, but there are seven. Yeah, it's the Hermetic Collection by the Three Initiates. Um, If you get it off of Audible, it is... Oh, wait, it's going to play it. Don't play it. Because if you read through them, they'll tell you about the universal laws and kind of get you going on how to have this kind of conversation. Um, and really, because you can't really be told, like we can describe what they are, but like, I feel like if you do the research, you really get a better understanding because they start to click, you know, stuff like as above, so below. I heard that so much in my life that like, but I remember the moment that I actually like got it or like, yeah, like snaps for Nicole. Cause I'm like, <laughs> yes, yes. Right. Like you're like, wait, like, oh, wait. And even more of the mirror thing. Cause everybody's like, well, the universe is a mirror. And you're like, what does that mean? Right. So I just stand and we stand in front of a mirror all the time. And I had to be like, what does that mean? And like a mirror reflects. Like you go through this thing and then you forget about it for a while and it comes up again and you're like, okay. And finally at some point I was like, oh, I get it. So like with a mirror, it's easier for me to explain a little bit. Cause like if you have, a, you have something that's unhealed in you, it's going to show up in the outside world. Now this could be a person, place or thing. And, uh, I found that if you meet it head on in the 3D world, it's just going to be replaced by somebody else. So like you tell that girl that she's kicked out or you don't like her. So we're not talking anymore. And you're like, yes, I stood up to my whatever and, you know, my boundaries and all this kind of stuff. And then she goes away. If you didn't heal that aspect inside of you in walks Sally and she's going to be the same energy, just in a different meat suit. Yep. So that's the, like, if it's a pattern, it's something inside of you. Which I love, sucks. I love when you say that. What, the meat suit? Yes, my favorite. <laughs> it catches so many people off guard and I love that. You know what I mean? <laughs> Same energy, just a different meat suit. And people are like, did she say meat? Did she say meat suit? And I'm like, yes, she did. She sure did. <laughs> <laughs> well, because we're just borrowing them. They're biodegradable suits. Yeah. Flush pockets. Flush Anyways. Pockets. A mush pocket. Mess. Flush pockets. Flush pockets. Yeah. I just reflecting. We, I still think we should have flush pockets. It would be very convenient. Thank God we're not marsupials. Could you imagine having like to carry your baby in a pouch? Do you could you imagine having a pouch? No. A little, I like... can imagine carrying a baby in my stomach, let alone a pouch. I guess we do have a pouch. We have an internal pouch. We have internal pouches. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> We're in rare form. I did too much peopling this morning. You did too much what? Peopling. Yeah. Yeah. It was too early this morning for me. And it was... I understand. I like compliments. Compliments are very nice. It's enjoyable sometimes. But mm -hmm. within within an amount. Because sometimes it gets to be too overwhelming for me. And I can feel the try, the try, try, try. She's so cool. Try, try, try kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And that's what it was this morning for me because I was wearing a pair of leggings that people love. I just, I was comfortable to me. Um, and mm -hmm. 
of course, my bat purse and my my hair. And it was just cut. all the ladies in the office at one point, like pinned me between the bathroom oh, and no. the room for my appointment. And I was just like, <laughs> oh, man, <laughs> you're like crying. <laughs> yeah, I was just like, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. I was like, what do I, what else do you, I, I'm, I don't know what else to say. So then I just laughed. And then I was like, I cannot wait to get out of here. And then it ended up, what's funny though, is it ended up going faster. My appointment went faster after that, which was really nice. That was nice. And I really loved the nurse practitioner there. So that was cool too. And I was just like, it went really fast and it was streamlined after that. And I was like, was that my... That was that your sacrificial lamb to get through that quickly? Was that my sacrificial polarity of like I want to get through here in and out because it's early in the morning and I can't I don't want to people this early, and I had mm-hmm. to get poked with a needle and I don't want to, and I just want to do this fast. I think that was it was like the well, you have to entertain the peoples, give them a little energy, and then guess what? Uh, yeah. We'll make this go very fast. And I was like, eh, well, next time you'll need a um. An offering. I could just bring my scary friend privilege. I could do that. <laughs> All right, you guys. <laughs> oh. uh, your mother's going to go to your appointments with you? Yes. <laughs> yes. I would not be mad about that. No, no. She wants me to stay right here. Right. I know no, she's she wa- 29. It's fine. She wants to stand. <laughs> no, I do want to stand. No, she <laughs> wants to stand. <laughs> she's standing. That's fine. But focus on me. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, next episode is going to be on the divine masculine. Because the things we talked about today, you guys, doesn't even scratch the surface. So. No, and I I really think you guys should check out that book. And just, it's super, it's a smaller book. A lot of people have it on their read list. It's easy to understand. And it gives you a basic understanding of the laws that we have to deal with on a daily basis. And that really is what helps manifesting and um, healing, healing, all the stuff that we're here doing, evolving. It just helps a little bit. Yeah, if you don't want to deal with all these things that we have to deal with, the only way to move up is to keep your understanding, elevate your consciousness, elevate your vibration, mm-hmm. keep rising above, man. Absolutely. Keep on keeping on. Keep on yeah. keeping on. And on that, I think we shall end. Keep uh, on keeping on. Keep on keeping on. Okay, we'll talk to you later, peeps. I love you. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>